Good morning everyone, welcome back to Tim Scott's Wolf Farm. I'm going down to the sheep, so yesterday I noticed one of them didn't look too special. All the rest flopped around the feeding trough. I can't see signs of worms. I've had a look at all its joints, there don't seem to be any, you know, breaks or anything like that. It's not hot to touch, it doesn't smell. So I'm hoping it's just under the weather, but I'm not sure. Now because it's raining this bad, I wanted to do this kind of intro first. If there's a good opportunity, if you can actually hear me, I'll try and do some recording down there as well. Over the last couple of weeks, we've actually done some really interesting stuff, which I want to share with you. Sorry I didn't post a video last week. It was just absolutely manic. I've not been very well. Lydia's not been very well. And it was just too much, really. Um, and with all this rain, there wasn't much going on on the farm. Here's what we've been up to, and I'll see you after. I finally delivered my water trough that I bought about three months ago. Just giving the sheep their last lot of haylage. I think the snow is probably gonna melt in a couple of days so they can just go back to the grass. This was just to make it as easy as possible for them whilst they were trying to keep warm. Teddy's with us, aren't you? Taking it all in. So we've just come up to Cyrus to stock market. It's Christmas time, so I thought I'd bring Edward up. We'll go look at some of the calves and the store cattle. But whilst we were here, because we were a bit early, we thought it made sense to pop into Class Western. Now, one of the big things for us, the telehandler is our most used vehicle on the farm, but actually it's one of the oldest. Now, we looked at JCB. Uh, we're obviously looking at Class Scorpion because they definitely seem to be coming up. So we're going to look at these two, but I just thought I'd show you around the yard as well. So they've got Class Scorpions, loads of Class Tractors, um, Richard Western trailers over there. You probably can't see because of the sun. Got a nice horse sprayer, very big Surrey tanker, Class Forager. They've got everything in here. It's got a pickup hitch and spool valves on the back, which is exactly what we were after. This is a picture of the inside of the cab. When we've got more chance, I'll show you properly. One of the quietest cabs. What do you think, Edward? Not sure yet. So we're in the sales bell to say that the market's starting. It's pretty cool coming to the market. Teddy likes to see all the animals. I like seeing how the auctioneer works. Kind of reminds me of Yellowstone, which we've been binge watching. Fast track, it's Derek's, isn't it? With a Broughton trailer, however you pronounce it. So we decided to come back on Thursday, which is sheep and barren cows, because I wanted to see whether I overpaid for the lambs that we bought. It's always a good marker. Be interesting to see what these make. A load of turkeys up over there for sale, so we got a ticket. The other reason I wanted to see what stores were going for so I could plan how much I was going to make next year. And they're also selling some turkeys, so we thought we'd grab some of them. So that was fun. I might got a bit carried away. I think I've just bought about four turkeys. One thing over Christmas time, what we try and do is not take holly when the berries are still on it. So yeah, of course it looks more festive, but it's more important for the birds to be able to eat it. Actually think about what source are you taking it from and what are you causing as like a chain reaction. So in this case, birds then can't get all the berries to eat. No, although they look fluffy on the outside, they're very hard inside now, that solid bone. That, and he is very independent, this one. So what's really interesting, it's Boxing Day, and I've got these four who I've just had to walk. The feed trough is kind of right over by those trees. Just had to come all the way over here. Sod's not because I was carrying Edward on my own. So what I wonder, Christmas afternoon, someone's let their dog off the lead. Probably scared them. Well, if you've seen my previous videos, you know that they move a lot faster than this normally. Edward's enjoying himself. I've also bought some new sheep shears as well, which I want to show you because they're so much different. The master clips were good, but I saw someone put online, it's so true. It's like trying to shear them with an angle grinder because you're holding it so tight. Um, the cylinder is almost so wide to have your hand round. So I bought some new ones, got them from Horner Shearing, and that should enable me, um, I, I think in sort of every, you know, two, three months, I can kind of give them a bit of a clean up and just keep on top of them as preventative rather than having to pay for a shearer to come out and then wait a couple of weeks for them to arrive. So I'm just gonna have a quick look around. Hopefully you can hear me all right. I've been thinking of changing the channel slightly. So some people will know I started it 
the year Edward was born and I want him to look back in you know 10 years time and think wow the farm is so much different than it was you know when I was first born so that's one of the key reasons but I want to have almost a strap line like our regenerative farming journey because the more I thought about it everything that we've been doing has been around soil health getting new machinery becoming more efficient releasing less carbon into the atmosphere using combined mixed rotations having a mixed farm incorporating livestock using cover crops it's all regenerative although I, we've now signed up to a magazine which was called the direct driller but they've changed it to the normal farmer because apparently zero till farmers are now normal farmers uh, and they were saying they prefer to call it circular farming apparently because everything you do on one thing has the cause and effect somewhere else so it's it's a circle basically oh there they are <laughs> morning Right, I'm gonna have a count up and then I'll let you know the score. So I've had a double count of 35, unfortunately, so I'm missing one. This is when I really wish I had a Can-Am or a Polaris because I'm getting soaked just walking around the field trying to find this other sheep. I was literally just doing my last bit there. Yeah. There she is. So it seems to move around. Oh, I could walk over and catch it yesterday, so I wonder if it's getting slightly better. I'm gonna check it twice a day anyway, just to keep an eye on it. I might bring it back to the farm and put it in the orchard, worst case. So an interesting side story, this culvert is where all the main sort of spring water used to come off the top of the fields, would go down into this thing and it used to actually feed all the water to the shroud. I'll tell you what, if farming paid well, it would honestly be the best job in the world. After a really wet day, we thought we'd have a go with the uni oven. You can hear it's absolutely tipping down outside, but I think we've mastered the stone-baked pizza. I still never put any time into cleaning my truck and actually trying to sell it. So I'm going to clean it and January, I'm determined to get it sold. So if you haven't seen my snow day video a couple of weeks ago, please do check it out. I'll put a link up above. This is the rest of the haylage, which they prefer to sit on rather than eat, which is kind of annoying. That's why there's so much wastage when you're trying to feed snow days, wet days, winter days, whatever. So we're going to load it up in the bucket. I've got a load of other sort of leaves and things from the yard going to take it along and we've got a heap of bales which is basically like a muck heap now it's just rotting down so I'm going to go tip that on there it's all loaded up when I look at it like this it looks like they didn't actually eat much at all so I'm going to take it up on the top what will be really interesting the Claydon drilled stuff boasts that you can travel on it most times of the year I know it's only our first year of Claydon but it'd be interesting to see whether we can actually travel on the ground a lot better than maybe some of the other fields I also need to make sure I don't forget the fork remind me So we're in one of the fields that we test drilled the Clayton with last year when we had it on demo. And they boast, as I was saying, that you should be able to travel, unless apparently the water is running down the road, you should be able to travel on a Clayton drill field without too much difficulty, without too much mess. Now you guys are gonna be able to see behind me quicker because you can probably see over my shoulder, but it'd be interesting to know that by drilling Clayton, not only are we getting all those other benefits, cost savings, high yields, etc but also we're going to be able to travel on some of our fields in wetter periods. So there's a bit of pickup on the wheels, but, but considering the rain we've had, I'm actually really impressed. Usually you wouldn't be able to drive on this field at all. Oh, first thing I said, remind me, I was about to sip it on with the fork in. That would be annoying. What tends to happen in these situations, wherever you put it, usually you'll run the bloody thing over. Look at how that branch kind of curls around that way and then goes out this way. It's a really unusual tree. Right, let's really quickly have a look at these marks. So it's just after Christmas, well actually after New Year thinking about it, and we've had pretty much two, three weeks of solid rain, like it has been running down the roads. And yet, we've just driven, or I've just driven all the way along with the map, bro, and well, you can barely see it's done anything to the ground at all. And the tires are pretty clean. So I'm quite impressed with that. I like these little tests. By clay drilling, it does look like we can access this ground 
at the depths of winter, as long as it isn't physically raining, even here. You can't even tell I've been in this. Whereas on our old conventional system, the ground's always really soft, which means we're always making marks. Now down there in the past, when we put winter wheat in, we were thinking we probably had ruts, you know, 20 centimeters deep. Winter is always quite a quiet time when you don't have loads of livestock. Obviously we've got the sheep, but they pretty much manage themselves. Whereas, you know, if we had cattle, you'd be feeding every day. So obviously the field was pretty good, but it wasn't perfect. So I'm just gonna get the pressure washer out. I did my truck earlier. Oh, I've left the lights on. Um, so I'm gonna turn the lights off, then I'm gonna just pressure wash them down. And there we go, so that's the end of the episode. Thank you so much for watching. As I said before, thank you for your support. It's the end of Tim's Cotswood Farm year one, year two starts. Please look forward to that. I'll post a load of stuff on the socials as well. And happy new year. Bye.